Hey guys, Matthew here, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at what my strategy was for the initial weekend of the league and essentially how it went. So I think the first thing that I want to talk about essentially is how much currency was made. Then we're going to be looking at how much time it took. And uh, finally, we're going to be looking at essentially the strategy. All right, so the first thing I, want, I need to mention is that technically I made half of this currency, right? So I was playing with a friend of mine and uh, typically when you play with a duo partner, you basically do have the work each and then at the end of however long you intend to play for you split the money in half and each person goes their own way so we managed to make around 200 exalts of value right not of pure currency as you can see i only have 41 exalt well only i have 41 pure exalts but we managed to make around 200 exalts of value uh, in the initial weekend of league as a two man right so technically what that means is that if this was uh, you know, if he hadn't quit, because that's what happened, uh, and I'll talk about that later on uh, in the final thoughts, um, then I would have technically walked away with 100 exalts for myself, and he would have walked away with 100 exalts. But remember, this is value, okay? So you can't be like, oh, it's not 200 exalt there, therefore it's not 200 exalt. Because we have a character, of course, that is built quite well, uh, and of course we have a lot of items, a lot of expensive items, a lot of expensive watcher's eyes, a lot of expensive crafts as well that we've made um, that just people can't afford because this league, it seems that everybody is quite poor so let's talk about uh where that money is right uh so first off i think it's important to look at excellence because it gives us a rough idea uh in terms of items that are very easy to account for so four thousand uh eight hundred and or just about four thousand nine hundred chaos exalts are uh, around 80 chaos right now which is somewhere around 60 exalts that is just pure currency and items that are very easy to account for after that comes the hard part right so for example watcher's eyes we have four of them which are counted at 40 chaos each well tell you what watcher's eyes are typically not worth 40 chaos right i have some watcher's eye here that's worth 10 exalts and this is a very low estimation i have one here at 5 exalt i have one here at 25 exalt this one being absolutely amazing especially with all, all the mana problems that are happening this league you slap this on something like um an eye shot uh, character or, and uh, you know you're you're going to be doing quite well. Um, so yeah, that's that. Now of course we do have some lesser ones. A lot of them have sold. A lot of the the ones that were between two and or one and four ish exalts have sold to be honest it seems like anything under five exalts seems to sell pretty okay anything above five exalts this league is a, an absolute pain to sell all right so that's just for the actual uh watcher's eyes what else do we have we have a belt here torrents reclamation now torrents reclamation got nerfed pretty heavily uh so it's only worth about 5x now the reason why i have mine at 12x is because of the implicit see this skill effect duration that's one of the best implicits in the entire game for this belt which is why it's so expensive now i have a lot of base that I haven't accounted for whatsoever between you know 10 and 50 chaos or something all of those are not accounted for I'm really only looking at the bigger ticket items okay we have some boots these are crafted now again we crafted some pretty nice items very early uh, because typically in any other league these would be selling no problem uh, something I again I said I'll talk about later this is uh, s some uh, in some regards why my duo decided to uh, to quit it and uh, fortunately for me he just told me to keep everything uh so right we have boots here these are basically just awaken or boots and then you have to unveil for the uh the move speed now of course with the unveil uh being now 50 50 and all that it does increase the, the cost quite a bit uh we made the first elevated craft in the entire league so what we have here is an elevated attack crit with power charge on crit now the reason why we made this is because this is like a perfect chess piece for elemental hits uh and we basically realize or at least guess that elemental hit was going to be popular uh in terms of builds that people are re-rolling into after their initial league starters an additional curse and some life absolutely crazy chess piece something that you would have seen quite later on in a league last league uh we have a pretty basic chess piece here attack crit non-elevated uh with frenzy charge on hit ag again with the additional curse and some life right so we've crafted some pretty good items but of course the vast majority of players this league are very very poor so that's why well it's going to take a while to sell and I'm, I, I understand that and i don't mind it at all uh, but this is a lot of our value right we have a lot of value in items we also got quite lucky uh when 
making some of these items honestly quite quite lucky i would have to say especially when it comes to my own gear we can have a look at that real quick uh, i'll have a, an updated video on uh, on my my league starter essentially if you want to min max it uh, to be able to do all the way up to the feared uh, because this character in its current state can do the feared but it can't do it omega juice but there seems to be a bug this league which the feared actually uh doesn't drop any additional anything even if it's 90 percent quantity versus completely zero percent quality right just scoured uh which is i mean I'm, I'm guessing it's a bug but that does mean that there's no advantage of being able to do them fully juiced which is nice uh which technically is is a bonus for this build uh as this build will not be able to do it fully juiced it just doesn't have the defense or the damage uh but if it comes to just a white feared it can do it uh, so yeah, we've got some Culling on Orb Gloves, so Awakener Orb Gloves, Awakener Orb uh, Amulet, quite lucky on the uh, on the Awakener's Orb here, as you can see, T3 Strength and T2 All Res, both things that I really, really need on this build. Uh, the Fingerless Gloves, the Unearth Culling, we got T2 Life on the, uh, on the Awakener's Orb with T3 Res and a bit of Dex, all things that this build needs. Open Prefix for Damage during Flask Effector, plus two AoE Gems, an absolute great pair of gloves uh we've got a helmet here with a nearby uh, minus nine but it's not awakened resorb it's just a, a regular helmet nothing too special uh it's got the nice fireball enchant however so uh the the wands are now quite expensive quite expensive to make they were really cheap uh when we made them matter of fact these two wands the bases which is the fractured plus one fire damage to spells cost us 25 c each when exalts were somewhere around the 40 c uh price so not even an X each for that, and then we just spam basically Essences of Woe, and when I say spam, I mean use one or two for the spell damage, and as long as you have an open suffix for crits, chance to spells, you're basically done, and these ones are absolutely fantastic. Uh, they'll hold on to you, uh, you, you'll be holding on to these until basically you get plus two, which are like, you know, 20 times more expensive, so of course that's much, much later on in the game. Uh, but yeah, so we have a lot of value on the character. If I had to ballpark anywhere between 25 and 30 exalts, uh, I've already showed some of the rares that we have, and then we also have a bunch of boss drops, right? I've got two Indigons sitting there. Now, Indigons are really cheap this league, uh, or at least they've become really cheap. This one's six exalts because of the rolls on it are cr quite good. I've got some Maven Orbs. I only only have one left. The Doppelganger. I've got some nice bases um, from, you know, bossing and all that. Um, so, yeah. In terms of current value... Oh, about 200x is a pretty rough estimate, which is... Uh, Honestly, probably very close to being just about what we've made. Now, let's talk about how we did it, right? Because that's what you people are here for. Uh, or actually, let's talk about how long it took, I guess. And then we'll talk about how we did it. So in terms of time spent, now, of course, you wouldn't make 200x in three days, even if it's two players, unless you're playing a lot. I think that's just something that you need to premise and understand. You need to play a lot to do this. So if we look at my stream, because everything was done on stream, or just about everything, uh, on the initial day of the league, I streamed for 18 hours. 17 of those were playing the game. So I played for 17 hours straight uh, when the league started. I went from basically zero, as everybody did, all the way up to 17 hours in uh, is around the time where I was somewhere in mid-red tier maps. Uh, so somewhere in T13, T14s, starting up my T15s and T16s, basically working up to the uh, to the, uh, the to Cyrus, right? Uh, then after that, I decided to take a little bit of a break. I took maybe an hour break. Um, then I played for another maybe two to three hours off stream, and then I went to sleep. Um, when I woke up after a few hours, I'm not so sure. sure I did the second bossing session. Now, this was the majority of the money. The majority of the money from the 200X was made within this nine hours. So if you're wondering how it was made, this would be the VOD to watch. In this nine hours, essentially, which was yesterday's stream, uh, we did a big, big bossing push where we were buying tons of sets, making tons of money. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as where the money came from and all that. The margins were pretty ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, so after that, I pretty much logged off, went to sleep, and then I woke up this morning and I was told that he didn't want to play anymore because the economy was way too slow. Now, a lot of people would tend to be like mad at him for just quitting like that, but the reality is that uh, the guy who was doing with this is one of the greatest in the game, and when the economy is as slow uh, and, and dead, if you want to call it that, as it is right now in terms of end game content, in terms of end game bosses, in terms of sets and all that, um, 
it makes it very very difficult to snowball and when you're used to snowballing extremely fast and you can't do that anymore uh, because of the state of the economy it's extremely discouraging right when you're used to crafting item after item after item and then selling them to make more and more and more and more and just snowballing out of control and you're out there sitting there you're making one item and having to wait you know a day for it to sell until you can make another one it's just boring it's just really really boring which is why i completely understand his decision of decided to uh, deciding to leave okay now that we got all that out of the way let's talk about how we did it so i've got a bunch of links opened up here uh, I'm sure it's pretty obvious, right? We're a duo, so what that means is that there's either two, there's basically two ways of playing as a duo: a carry and a support, which would mean you'd have somebody like uh, playing some brand build or some rain of arrows or some build that's really, really good uh, for scaling damage with auras, and then you'd have an aura bot, which is basically boosting your damage into the stratosphere uh, and making you, you know, very, very tanky. Uh, and you invest all the currency in the ore bot. You basically use absolute garbage gear on the carry because it doesn't matter. The ore bot is what's important here. Now, the other way to play this is that you have a bosser and then you have somebody who's a hideout warrior. That's the way that we played it. So he was hideout warrior, which means he was flipping and he was uh, crafting. As you saw the items that he crafted, those were pretty much all of him. Uh, and he was flipping things. Uh, and his other job is to basically take the items that I'm giving him from what I'm doing which is the bossing part and selling them and then buying me things in order to make it so I never have any downtime of just sitting in my head and waiting so that was his job and he did that extremely well obviously um, so then what happened is I'm the bosser right so my job is to get to the uh, to the end game as fast as possible and, and get as many levels as I need for my build to function to be able to kill end game bosses. Matter of fact, I was actually the first person to do Uber Elder in the entire league. Spoiler alert, I failed. Uh, I actually failed it. I got both bosses to about 10%, but I didn't have the culling anoint on my amulet. So yeah, I failed it. Uh, we decided we went in a little bit too quick, but I'll show you case. I'll, I'll, sh I'll talk about that a little bit later on why it doesn't even matter. And that's totally fine to actually fail some bosses. Um, because your your estimated returns are just through the roof that early in a league okay so that was my job so that's what i did right the first 17 hours i just pushed levels got to level 90 as fast as possible and then i started farming uh pure triula breach stones because pure triula breach stones have 100 percent chance to drop you a uh, uh a blessing pure chili breach stones were going for about 1.5 exalts and the breach stone were selling for four exalts we did four of those uh, so all just there, that's 10x, right? That's 2.5x all profit per breach stone. Boom, right? Now we weren't able to sell all of these fragments at 10x, uh, or sorry, at 4x. I think we sold two for 4x and two for 3x. Still, that's 8x all profit in a very, very short amount of time. Now, of course, you'd be like, oh, why didn't you just do that nonstop? Well, because supply is a problem in an early league scenario, right? There's not going to be 75 pure Sheila Breach Stones just sitting there waiting for you to grab them. And of course, buyers are also a big problem there's not going to be 75 different people who are willing to pay three or four exalts for a blessing this early into the league right the only people who were buying those from us were aura bots obviously uh who were basically backed up by big teams right four five six man teams because as i said earlier it's all about putting the money into the aura bot and making sure that your aura bot is is geared up right because he's the one taking care of both giving you damage and survivability uh, but we did it for as long as we could and it was quite good uh, that's that was my first goal now after that came the actual bossing portion and that's what I want to talk about why bossing is so incredibly strong um, you know in the first day and the second day of a league and now that we're you know the fourth fifth sixth seventh day of the league it's skyrocketing downwards right it is plummeting in terms of uh in terms of value and that's what happens every single league because as more and more and more people get to the point where their character are capable of doing it there's more and more and more people that are actually going to be putting out the uh the the, the items that drop from those bosses onto the market and the more items are onto the market, right? Well, of course, the less profit margin because people just start undercutting each other, especially early. It's it's truly 
outrageous how bad people would undercut it's like let's say you start up you have an item that's 4x some guy will be like okay i want to sell mine first because i need the money now because it's early in the league right so i'll sell it for 3.5 and then you're like wow well i need the money now too so i'll just go 3x and then people just do that and you see items that start off at like five six exalts and then all the way down to like 100 chaos within hours it's really crazy that actually happened with uber elder this league but let's talk about what we did so cortex Cortex and in the, the start of the league were going for about 90 chaos. We probably ran about 15 of them or something because they were incredibly cheap. 90 chaos was like a little over one exalt, not even two exalts. And look at the price of these. Nebulous was going for 260 chaos, which was about four exalts at the time which is insane, right? Four exalts for one of the most common drops. Bottled Faith was even more expensive than that. Uh, five or six exalts or something like that. Uh, and then of course you have other items that drop from Cortex. Uh, the Garb was going for a few exalts. That's really good for anime guardians. Um, now that started dropping extremely fast, but initially it was quite good. Nebulous was really the big one though, because especially if you get good rolls on them, they're worth even more. Of course, sometimes you're going to get gloves, but here's the thing, right? Um, even if you get gloves, let's say for one run and you basically lose your money invested, the rest of the map is still dropping you a bunch of stuff. And for example, Cortex has a ton of monsters, so it drops you a ton of maps. I was getting maybe five to 10 red maps per cortex right so those alone were going for about five to ten c each depending on the tier of the map which was like insane because that alone is nearly paying for the entirety of the map if you get something like uh breach rewards influence items right you can easily skyrocket that number even much much higher so cortex was really really good for money and the thing about cortex is that it's really easy to be able to run this if you're playing a build that has a lot of damage uh because you can basically skip most of the mechanics and i have a series anyways on my youtube channel about how to properly do bossing uh, and cortex is quite easy okay so that was basically it for cortex i'd say that we made a good bit of our money from cortex because as i said right the profit margins on those nebulous were ridiculous every time that we were getting a nebulous we were doubling our money from cortex uh and every time we were getting like garb we were uh doubling our money every time we were getting uh, bottled faith which we didn't get any we'd have tripled our money and then every time we got gloves we broke even because of the loot of the rest of the map including of course the bases item level 84 for some bases 83 for some other bases uh and stuff like that but I would say the majority of our money came from Uber Elder. And Uber Elder is fun because it's hard to do, right? And now with the nerfs and movement abilities, it's especially hard to farm Uber Elder. Uh, but uh, there's actually something really cool when it comes to Uber Elder. So the thing about Uber Elder, I said earlier, I did the first Uber Elder in the league, right? And I said that I did that somewhere around 15, 16 hours maybe into the league, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, so it was not even one full day into the league, because I remember it was the morning of Saturday uh, that I did my first Uber Elder. Now, unfortunately, I did fail it, but here's the thing. To be able to do an Uber Elder, you need two Shaper Fragments and two Elder Fragments. Nobody had killed Shaper yet, right? So how are you able to get to the point where you can farm Uber Elder this early into a league? Well, it's because of this divination card, the Eldritch Decay. Not only were we able to farm Uber Elder less than 24 hours into the league, because after I failed my first one, uh, we spent like two hours basically upgrading the character a little bit, put a f uh, maybe two or three extra exalt into it, got an extra level or two, uh, and then I started actually farming him successfully, right? Less than 24 hours into the league, I was farming this guy. And here's the funny part. This card here was going for about three to four chaos. Now it's starting to go up in price as more and more people are able to farm it. But it was going for three to four chaos. So here's the thing about this. It's a four fragment card and it can give you any of the four fragments and it does not seem to be weighted. It has the same chance to give you the red ones and the gray ones, okay? So what that means is that on average, it would take you four cards per fragment and there's four fragments right which is 16 cards to complete a full set now of course you could get the, mul the one fragment multiple times but on average 16 cards for a full set and they were starting at three to four chaos which is absolutely insane we were getting uber elders for 90 chaos on average per set that's how much uh, my buddy was telling me that we were paying for so even if I failed the first one, all we lost was about 90 chaos, which was at the time, maybe somewhere like one point something exalt, which wasn't too big of a deal. 
right? So it wasn't even two exalt per set for Uber Elder Farming sub 24 hours into the league. And look at the price of Indigon, 336 chaos. This was going for six to seven exalts. Matter of fact, on the first day that we started farming these, I dropped three of those very, very quickly. Probably three of them within like the first 10 Uber Elders, which is very lucky. I don't think I don't think that's uh, anywhere is something you can expect, but I dropped three of those. They sold for, I believe, seven, six, and six X or something like that. That's literally insane. And that's just one drop, right? Mark of the Shaper at the start was going for four Exalt. Mark of the Elder, four Exalt, right? So even if Exalts were something like, I don't know, 60, 70 C, these were going for like four Exalt. Now they look really cheap and that's because they didn't stay that price for very long. As soon as even one or two other people start farming it, it crashes because remember what I said, people will start undercutting each other nonstop, right? And now it's like completely dead. They're not worth anything. Uh, but they were selling for four exalt. And Mark of the Shaper and Mark of the Elder are basically guaranteed almost, right? One of these two is almost every single time. They're the worst drops you can get. They're the most common drops. And they were selling for anywhere between three and four exalts each. I remember uh, four in a row. Four in a row, I got a Mark of the Shaper and a Watcher's Eye, uh, which is like really really lucky like that's absolutely not something you expect uh but market the shaper was extremely expensive and market the elder was also extremely expensive at some point market the elder became cheap but market the shaper is true like insanely expensive and then market the shaper completely crashed and market the elder actually shot up back to four exalt it was super weird i'm not sure if there was some price fixing going on we were not caring about that because remember we were getting these sets for about 90 c per set and no matter what no matter what drop we were getting right we were making massive money and the thing that we did is that Just need as soon as i got to be back. strong enough right to farm uber elder after we did a few of them and we had enough currency we invested into some guardian maps to get me into gate uh, to get me gates into the abyss so what i did is basically i did the elder and the shaper invitations i did them white it didn't matter if I was basically making any money from them whatsoever, matter of fact, I think I lost money, but it didn't matter because I, my goal was just to get gaze into the abyss because this was going to increase my watcher's eye drop rate by 10%, which is huge. Instead of a one in four, it becomes like a one in three and shaper drops three additional shaper items. So recap, we're getting these sets for about 90 C. Now, of course, this rose as, as, the, as time went on, but initially it was around 90 C. I don't think we got any of them for, for over uh, like 150 or something. Uh, and we were selling like the marks for anywhere between 2 to 4x for most of the league. Now, yesterday is when these two really crashed. But for a solid 24 hours, these were actually really, really good money. Indie Gun was really good until today. Today it crashed. Um, and of course, there's other drops from Uber Elder that are not accounted for here. Uh, there's the Quiver, which oh, I actually sold the, 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 the one that I had. Uh, but if we look at the drops, right, uh, just to give you guys an idea. Uh, there's Watcher's Eyes, which are hit or miss. Sometimes they're absolutely worthless. Sometimes they're worth a little bit. The, the fun thing about it is that that early into the league, no matter what you get, so long as there's even one remotely decent stat, it's worth 1x, right? Like I had a Watcher's with uh, the Zealotry mod that gives you a uh, recovery rate or something, the 30% that nobody cares about, sold for an X, right? Uh, any of the pen, any of the, any, pretty much any of the crit ones, they were all really, really good, all selling for at least one or two X. And then anything like decent, like a little bit above average, um, that most of the time is only going to be less than an X were like three, four X. Because the thing is there's no supply and people who want these because it, it gives them a lot of damage on their builds, uh, they'll buy them no matter what the price is. So we were selling some, uh, one stat ones sold extremely well. Two stat ones are just too expensive. That's why all the two stats ones, I still have them. Uh, they're probably not going to sell for another few days uh, until people actually even have the currency. All right, Disintegrator, um, 3x initially. It was selling for 3x. It didn't take long. It went all the way down to 20c. But the first Disintegrator that I dropped, we sold it for nearly 4x. It was like 3.5 or something. Pretty insane. Void Fletchers. The first ones are 4 5x. Mark the Shaper, Mark the Elder I've spoken about. Indie Gone I've spoken about. Void Forge. I dropped the Void Forge and I was sad because I thought we had just lost money. It was worth 3x. Every single thing. I dropped an Eternity Shroud today. 6x. Now it was a good roll, so most of them were 5x, but still. 6x, right? It's insane, insane money because you, you think about it, we're spending less than 2x and no matter what we get, we're basically doubling our money. So it all comes down to how many of these per hour can you farm, right? Uh, 
so all you're gated by essentially is the amount of eldritch decay cards on the market all right so that's pretty much that now uh, before i end the video i want to talk about essentially what we would have done typically okay so it's one thing to farm these bosses while they're truly at their best same thing for maven maven was also quite good initially but it didn't take long for it to really really drop as the price of the belts of watchstones etc started to really drop down as more and more people were able to farm it but initially nobody was able to farm it so even just the belts some of them were multiple exalts i'm not even kidding uh the belts that you wouldn't even normally pick up right uh so very very good there but the thing is you can't keep going on forever because as i said as competition appears it becomes harder and harder to the point where you're not even making any money anymore which is kind of where we're at right now there's very little profit to be made uh there's still high ceiling for potential especially for something like you know uber elder because of the of the watcher's eyes uh but in in terms of averages you're not going to be making a whole lot so the question becomes what do you do after that and this is where crafting typically becomes very very good uh which is why we started you know doing woke orb items and stuff like that and of course also divination card flipping becomes really really good for the end game divination card things like um for example uh, the Empower level 4 gems, the Enhanced level 4 gems, the Torrent Reclamation card stuff, right? All of the really expensive div card. I mean, you could even say Headhunter, right? Uh, to some extent. Uh, now, of course, Headhunter that early, most people can't afford it at all. Uh, but there's still some pretty huge profit margin. Mirror Divination cards, in, in some cases, some of them are good. A lot of them are bad uh because typically they're overpriced but there's a lot of options to go for in terms of snowballing but that's where as i mentioned uh this league the economy is so incredibly slow because people are so stuck way behind uh that most people are just not buying any items that are even remotely expensive uh which is kind of hurting uh you know their snowballing potential which is why he decided to call it quits and why uh well myself i mean i'm just going to keep doing whatever uh is fun and whatever is even remotely uh, profitable i'm really really enjoying this fireball character i mean i showcased it yesterday in the cyrus catch my breath. since then i've upgraded it as i mentioned earlier in the video uh but it's doing extremely extremely well but anyways this is basically my story time of how we made up to about 200x in value in just over uh the initial weekend of the league as two players now i think that any other league it would probably nearly double that and i'm not even saying that like as a joke i'm not even exaggerating uh but given the economy this league, given the fact that people are extremely poor um you know we were we weren't able to push for that much but still 200x in the initial weekend i decided i wanted to share with you guys some of the tips and tricks uh, especially for something like the you know card in order to get the sets before anybody else has even farmed the bosses required uh, is is some really cool little tips that you guys should remember if you plan to do something similar to that which by the way you don't need a trailer you could easily do all of that yourself but your efficiency goes down as you have to buy your own stuff and sell your own stuff you can't just keep bossing while the other person is taking care of your actual items all right, boys, that's going to be about it for me. Before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to my supporters, Jordan, Fruitfly, Thomas, Neroth, Master, Tim, Nate, Jacob, Flame Scorpion, Reese, Emil, Rotom Millions, Alex, Brandon, Don, Joseph, Welcome Back, Panda, Edicus, Scott, Bard, Grimoire, Johnny, Ronald, Kevin, Mercury, and Bizen, as well as, of course, everybody else who has supported me in the past and everybody else who wishes for me anonymous. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.